Hi everyone, it's Paula here from Craftables. I'm just coming to share with you my lock and pop card today. So this is another interactive card, as you'll know I like my interactive cards. <laughs> so this one we fold back and then we can pull these little pieces out from the side and it will sit to be displayed like that. So to put it back together again, we're just going to fold it back and pop those tabs underneath that tag. Now for this card here, I am going to show you how to do this background technique. Um, it's a really fun, quick and easy one to do and it's so, it is literally so easy to do. So let's get started. Right, so if you'd like to buy the instructions for this card, all the measurements will be in the instructions. So you can go to uh, www.craftables.co.nz and go into kits and or classes and it will have in there um, a list of all the different classes and instructions that we have and they are only five dollars so it'll have all your measurements on there so I've gone ahead and cut this one out and scored it so we've got quite a few score lines on there and what I've done is I have scored like folded on each of my score lines and then I have then burnished it down that way and then I have folded it back the other way and burnished it down that way as well now the reason we're doing that is so that when we have this um, moving it's nice and easy to move and it's not going to hinder its opening and closing so I've gone ahead and done all that already now I have cut out some navy blue cardstock here to be just a little bit smaller than each of my panels here so I'm just going to go ahead and lay all those down and again the measurements for all this will be in the instructions so I'll just pop all these down onto my panels here What I'll do now is I'll just put this aside and I'm just going to show you how we've done that background technique. So I have a plastic bag here. So this is a 12 by 12 one, but an A4 one will be just as fine. So what we want to do is screw that up. So give it a good screw up so you want it really, really tight there. And we're just going to lay it back out again. So now we have all these little, um, little wrinkles in there. So we want to just lay that flat again. Now I am using a distress sink and the reason I'm using a distress sink is because that does react with water. So this one is the chipped sapphire which goes nicely with the um, darker papers there. So I'm just going to take the lid off and I'm just going to dab it. So I'm not going to rub it, I'm just going to dab it all over my plastic bag here. You won't see it very well. So we're just going to dab it there. Don't rub it because if we rub it it's going to go down into all those little... Um, grooves in there and the reason we're actually screwing up the plastic is so that we get some ridges okay so just dab it on there and I've got myself a spritz bottle with it's just got water in nothing special and I'm just going to give it a spritz so I'm going to get it fairly wet not so wet that it's going to roll off everywhere so as you can see I'll just bring that up it's it's pulling but it's not soaked okay so I'm just going to grab one of my A4 pieces of cardstock here and I'm just going to lay that over the top and just squish it down. So smoosh it down into that um, ink and water there. Okay, so when you think you've got it all down, you're just going to gently pull, peel it back. And there you have an awesome background paper. You can do this for anything. We've done it on scrapbooks, I've done it on cards, I've done it on mixed media. It is a really fun and quick way of getting a really nice background. So I would let that dry. It doesn't take very long, a um, couple of minutes, and, and especially in the summer heat that we've got at the moment. If you can't wait that long, <laughs> which is like me completely, then I just you can heat it with a heat gun. Now when you heat it with a heat gun, just make sure that you heat it on the top and underneath and it will stop that curling so heating it on the top and the bottom will stop the curling of the paper and it will let, help it lay a bit flatter all right so i'm just going to put that one aside now i have done one before and i've cut all the pieces out so i'm just going to go ahead now so see how it gives that beautiful watercolor look to it so i'm just going to go ahead now and i'm going to stick all these pieces down onto my blue panels so i'm just going to go ahead and do that Okay, so I've put all of my uh, watercolor paper on the back of those, on the front of those black, sorry, dark blue paper. <laughs> we'll get it right in a minute. So now when we fold that down, 
it's going to fold like this. So these little ones here are going to face out. So this is actually going to be the front of your card and this is the inside of your card. So I'm just going to fold those down and then I'm just, I've just cut another little bit of my um, handmade paper, so my watercolour paper. So it's a little bit smaller than that tab there and I'm going to put those on these two here. So that's the back part, of the front part of it there. So I've gone ahead and cut all these little blue flowers out. So I wanted to put these on the front of my card. So this part here. So as you can see, if I pull this out, we're up to this bit here. So I've put my piece of watercolour paper on there. And I'm now going to go ahead and just put my flowers down the side there. Alright, so I've stuck down my flowers around the outside there, so I actually want to put a couple on the inside of my card now, so I've got a few left over. So I'm just going to pop one there, just to give it a bit of pretty to it. So you can do as many or as little flowers as you like, you could even cut bits and pieces out for a men's card for this one. And I'm just going to pop the other one up on the corner here. So if you were to do this, if this card again, you wanted to do, whoops, sorry about that wanted to do a men's card you could um you know cut out some cogs and some um, gear wheels and stuff like that um, which would be really lovely okay so that's the inside of my card there and this is now the outside of my card there right so to hold all this down we need to do our tag so i'm just going to bring my tag in so I have some box card here, so it's a really thick card stock, which is really good for this because we want a bit of thickness to be able to hold down the whole card. So if I just had put this down as a paper, this would all bend up and all this would sort of flop out. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my ta tag cut out onto this box card and then I'm going to cut around it to give it some extra strength. I'm just going to glue that on. And now I'm just going to cut around that tag so that it's got some nice good strength there. Okay, so there's our tag. So now what I'm going to do is bring my card back in. And this piece in the center here, I'm going to put a bit of foam tape on. So just grab my foam tape. There we go. Now oh, it's got a hole in the middle of it. <laughs> Just cut that off. All right, so I've got the 12 mil thick tape here, and I'm just going to put the foam tape down in the center there. So I'm not going to go all the way to the top and bottom. I just want to bring it down a little bit because my tag does not fit completely to the top and bottom. Pull that back off, fold it all down, and then I'm just going to put my tag right in the center there. All right, so I had another little piece here that I've cut out, like a little um, sentiment, and I'm just going to pop that onto the side of my tag. You could put a stamp there if you wanted to, if you didn't have any of the um, sentiment things. Now, I have gone ahead and I've not punched my hole out, so I'm going to see if I can do that before, without having to take it off. There we go. Awesome. <laughs> so I would punch the hole out before you put that on there. And I've got myself a really thick ribbon here, and I'm just going to thread it through the hole at the top. So I've folded it in half. So I have a loop here, and I'm just going to pull the tails through the loop and pull that through there. There we go. All right, so now that's quite large, so I'm just going to fold it in half, and I'm just going to cut it off into a fishtail. There we go. All right, so there's the ribbon on there. So now when I fold it up, I'm going to fold it down so that it looks like that. And these are going to fold underneath and clip in. And there you have it. So there's our lock and pop cut. I hope you give it a try. And remember, if you want the instructions and you want the measurements, they're on our website, craftables.co.nz. And you can purchase them for $5 and you can use them again and again as, as to your heart's content. And um, it's an instant download. So the minute you put the payment through, the instructions will download instantly to your email. So I hope you give it a go. And again, we would love to see what you come up with on our craft amenities page. So I hope you join me again next week for another interactive card and we'll see you then.
Thank you. Bye.